Hello everybody and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2 with the Game of Thrones mod here playing as Sir Gregor Clegane. I do apologise if the footage looks a bit different, if kind of things seems to have moved on a little bit since last time. I don't think it has too much. Basically I recorded an entire episode and we went about two more years past this and all sorts happened and then I stopped recording and realised my microphone had managed to unplug itself or I'd accidentally knocked it. Halfway through the recording, so I lost most of the audio, and I didn't see the point in, you know, sticking with it, and, and you know, just, you know, moving on from that point and saying, oops, sorry, I decided to come back to this time, you know, obviously the game autosaves really, you know, it's got a really good autosave feature, uh, which saves me, saved my bacon this time, um, so I decided to come back, so lots of things are going to change, so... It's going to be interesting to see how differently things turn out. I don't want to say too much about what happened on the other, you know, the other footage, because uh, I feel like it might, you know, people might get a bit annoyed that it was more exciting than what might happen here. Hopefully things still work out in the same way, because it was rather jolly fun. Uh, there we go. Okay, it seems to be progressing in a similar way, because my wife is pregnant, and, you know, that happened last time. So maybe we might end up with the same sort of scenarios happening in this version of events. Now one of the things I did on the other side, um, I keep saying the other side, the other recording, is I built private farms. I think I'm actually going to save some money and build uh, a castle town instead because that gives some nice tax income boost which will then obviously, you know, the whole spend money to make money thing. It's going to be more useful to save a bit of money, get the castle town and then it's going to make it easier to afford other things. Essentially I want to eventually build up my infrastructure in Fang Tower. I talked about this on the other recording, uh, that I like to kind of build up what I have. I'm not one for rapid expansion and taking as much land as possible. I do like to work with what I've got, so in this case I like to build up Fang Tower to the point where I'm making a good amount of money. We are in command again to scare off these raiders. Uh, but not a lot exciting happening to us. We just keep being used to fend off some raiders, which isn't exactly what Gregor Clegane wants. He wants a proper fight and a proper war. Uh, Driftmark still fighting for their, their independence. Not sure how long they're going to last. Uh, they don't have the best of garrison. They do have a decent force and a decent garrison, but once you lose that, it's kind of difficult for them to keep this land. So they're not going to last too much longer, unfortunately for them. Hopefully he's a bit sympathetic to Monford, whether he is or not, is very debatable. So we're no longer in command, we've scared off those raiders, and that's it, although more raiders have now arrived. Duncan Cressy, oh, he died of a natural death. So we are going to need a new spy master. It's probably going to end up being, yeah, it's going to end up being Livia again. We're going to have her scheme in Fang Tower to try and keep us safe from any potential plots, because we're Gregor Clegane. You know, lots of people want to murder Gregor Clegane. And a five-year-old was hanged by Paramount Willis of the Reacher. High Tower as well. Oh dear. What are the High Towers doing? Have they declared war? Yeah, okay, they're trying to take over Old Town. Ah, we've had a son. There we go. Walder Clegane. Walder, an excellent name. Huge and strong. Perfect. This is the heir we wanted. I'm going to call him Arnie. Or should I call him Arnold? We'll call him Arnold. Arnold. There we go. So we now have completed that ambition to have a son and we have a new heir. So we're going to go for the ambition to have five children, because that's what I did last time. Uh, and, I, you know, I feel like Clegane wants his name to be known far in the future. So by having as many children as possible, he gives himself the best chance of that. But now we have a huge and strong son, which is excellent. So we have a huge daughter who's surviving infancy despite her sickness. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to find... Oh, a genius wife. Oh, that's tempting. Um, a pretty wench is throwing herself at you. Ah, uh, sure, why not? <laughs> I'm so so flippant with that situation. I feel like Gregor doesn't care, though. Uh, there are quite a few options here for suitors. Obviously, don't quite know how they're going to develop in the future, so I'm going to wait a little bit. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this... Uh, no, uh, there. Stop Stop doing what you are currently doing. Stop everything. Um, I'm going to add her as a special interest character, so if we don't find anyone better... Having a genius in the family would definitely help us quite a lot. It's always nice to have a genius wife or partner. Queen Daenerys Stormborn has created another title. She is conquering land left and right. She has the entirety of Eastern Slaver's Bay apart from Young Kai. Uh, so actually she doesn't have much of it. <laughs> I kind of made a mistake there. 
Uh, but I'm sure she'll take that very soon. There are a few rebellions happening here against Stannis, which should not be surprising in the slightest. Yeah, I am quite surprised one of those kind of bigger lords hasn't tried to get their independence yet. Yeah, it's, you know, he's been a bit of a, of a tyrant, it's fair to say. Stevron the Just in charge now of the phrase. Doran Duran, uh, <laughs> Doran Duran, Duran Martell was hanged by King Stannis. Oh dear, why? Why? Why would you do that? So Ariane Martell is now the ruler. Don't think she's going to stand up for that one. We'll be very surprised to see Dawn keep with it and, and not try and get some revenge. It looks like Daenerys now has Young Kai as well. There we go, that's the Empire I was talking about. I kind of got confused once again with the other recording I did, but we're trying to keep up. Nice uh, Summer Isles down there. I've always kind of fancied doing a playthrough of the Summer Isles. I feel like it's a quite an interesting region, which we don't see a lot of. Definitely don't hear a lot of from the books. Uh, but I don't quite know where to start with that one, so we'll do that maybe for another time. I think that could be interesting. I also kind of tend to do a pirate one. Uh, but we'll stick with... We'll stop it. We'll stick with Gregor Clegane. That's who we're, that's who we're focused on today. Good old Gregor. Again, not many people on our most important character list dying yet, apart from Duran Martell, of course. We did add Podrick Payne, as someone requested it. Uh, he is now in our special character. Look at that old goatee and beard combination. I don't feel too well. Something is wrong with me. I am burning up with fever. My nose is running and my head feels as if someone is banging something hard against it. Oh, we are now ill. Ill and depressed. That is not a good combination. Don't really want Gregor to die just yet with his son so young. That would be very annoying. Um, in fact, just to be safe, I'm actually going to uh, make that arrangement to marry the genius. Because it's, it's never a bad thing to have a genius in the family. I know it doesn't give us any kind of um, titles or anything, but I kind of I kind of want to build uh, build a dynasty for my son where he can then go on and start to, you know, expand the realm a little bit for us. Master of Laws Sir Elbert is doing a superb job. I'm having trouble with the town and a castle in Fang Tower, and I shall, and I shall of course send my Master of Laws Sir Elbert to try and increase the relations between them and us. Which one should I start with? Well, we only have cities and of course the Fang Tower, so we're going to go with the town and increase the vassal opinions of, of them to us. That didn't make any sense. Sir Laslin's died as well. He died after a period of illness, so we need a new treasurer. Uh, we don't have any good ones, so I'm going to have a quick look to see if there's any uh, any treasures we can invite to our court. Duncan Tuttle, apparently the best Castellan in the lands. So as long as he's better than eight, I think it was, then we'll invite them to the court. Although it's not looking likely looking for that nice green. Ah, there's one there. Gunthor, commander of Old Town. Thirteen, not bad. Uh, and we'll harbour a high tower before they all get killed by the Tyrells. And he's have a family as well, so expand our court even further. He's now our treasurer. Collect taxes. Get us some nice cash. Set it playing again. So it's always nice to have kind of a big family come to your court because it just ensures you're always going to have a supply of courtiers. Uh, oh, the war for Driftmark Independence has ended. We could now hold a tournament, but I'm not going to do that. Sir Gregor again, I hereby invite you to participate in the tourney of Tendring, where the knights residing near Tendring shall test their metal. Of course, I'm going to attend. I'm the mountain that rides. I'm going to crush everything in sight. Besides to institute the minimum faith authority law, I'm just going to ignore that for now. I feel like Gregor doesn't really care about the uh, kind of goings on of the wider realm. So Stan is continuing his tyrancy. Uh, your daily routine involves repeatedly swinging your blade at a training dummy. However, you can only learn so much from fighting an inanimate enemy, and the practice gets dreadfully dull after a while. So we're going to invite Sumner uh, to join us in our training. He's probably going to be crushed and killed very quickly, because we're the mountain that rides. We are a massive man. Why would you fight this? You idiots. Ah, so Montford managed to ransom himself. That's interesting. Uh, our illness is cleared, which increases our uh, marshal again. So, who are we fighting first? Lord Ulmer of Tendring, I think, is our first opponent. No, it's Sir Leicester. Uh, not the best duelist in the land. Steady. Sorry, I should have read that out, really. 
As you close in on your opponent, you see an opening. You definitely guide your lance in into strike whilst evading their charge. So we hit them. Uh, we didn't knock them off though. So Lester took the full force of your lance and was sent reeling, only and only managed a glancing blow upon your own armour. He almost fell off, but managed to regain his balance and round the other end of the list, ready for another tilt. Knock him off this time. If you manage to hit him again, is this enough this time? You and Celeste collide fiercely, both lances shattering in a hail of splinters. You both ride on Scylla Horse to the other end of the list to take a new lance from a squire. You notice Sir Lester is now bleeding profusely from a wound, but he urges his mount on for another charge regardless, so he's now wounded, interestingly enough. So we managed to hit him again, surely this has got to be it now. There we go, we finally knocked him off and he has suffered a serious wound. We now fight Sir Forley Prester. Again, not the best duelist, so hopefully we can overcome. The Tony Herald announces the competitors for the next joust. You have taken, uh, you have been drawn against Sir Forley Prester. You mount your charge, take a lance from your squire, and ride to the end of the list as Sir Forley does likewise. Then on cue, the horses break into a gallop. Uh, okay, we beat that last one. Your opponent got the better of you when you met in the centre of the lists. Your lance merely makes a glancing blow on their armour whilst their lance hits true. Please don't fall off. Ah, uh, we fell off. Okay, that's that's embarrassing. He's got a dual skill of six. Uh, so Foley Prester's lance strikes you square in the middle of your breastplate, exploding into many pieces as it hits. Force knocks the wind out of you and sends you flying down from your horse. Ouch. So we lost 10 prestige, which is a bit annoying. We did get the claim on tendering, though, finally. So we're going to now change uh, Sir Albert Shett to be improving diplomatic relations with Tyrion Lannister. But we could, any time we want, declare war and take tendering for ourselves. It looks like his father died quite recently, actually. Maybe that's why he did the tournament. Um, oh, I injured Sumner. See, I told that was going to happen. I said he was going to get crushed. Uh, after many tilts over several days, only two knights remained undefeated. Sir Mandon Moore and Sir Edric Baratheon faced each other in the final joust. As a mid of tilts, I finally executed jousting. Sir Edric was unhorsed. So both of my courtiers did better than me, which is a bit embarrassing. Oh, Sir Edric was wounded. No. It's not what I needed. Luckily, Olivia is pregnant again, so hopefully they can have a son and expand our family further. But yeah, a bit embarrassing we didn't manage to win that, but considering our considerable advantage over most of the other competitors. The tourney ends, and although I may not have won any of the me melee events, my prowess in the list did not go unnoticed. So we can still hold a tournament. I don't really fancy holding a tournament, though, to be honest. Uh, Lord Paramount Lord Will uh, Willis trying to take some more land for himself. Greedy boy. No big wars at the moment, though. We're still suffering a lot of raiding from the Iron Bull. More than I usually see, to be honest. Whether King Balon has just decided to go all out on this, this playthrough, I don't quite know, but yeah, suffering a lot of raiding at the moment, which is a bit annoying. But hopefully um, Livia has a son. That's what we're going to be looking out for now, to see if we have a grandson. There we go. We do have a grandson called Walder. They're obsessed with the name Walder in this family, so we'll just call him Walder. Why not? And he is... Was that strong or huge? He is huge. That's even better. So that gene is carrying on through the family. Lots of huge children all over the place. Fang Tower is not big enough for all these children. Uh, which, speaking of which, let's have a look at tendering a little bit more. So they have 1.75 thousand army levies they can call. And a garrison of 713. How many men can we call? We can call up 3,000 over 3,000 men, so not bad at all. Ma Manfrey Martel seeks to kill Sir Gregor the Mountain Rides. Well, that's just not going to happen, is it? It's just not allowed. Uh, we're going to auto ask people to stop their plots automatically instead of having to click ourselves. Hopefully he backs out of that one. Realises it's a mistake now that he knows we know about it. Oh! Ed, Moyes, Ed, uh, Ed Muir is back in charge of uh, the... what's it called? What's it called? The Kingdom of the Trident. Okay, there we go. Um, I actually meant the High Lordship of Riverrun, but yeah, okay, so he now commands the Trident, which is interesting. He was dethroned, but has managed to take that land back. Uh, I'm still debating whether we attack Tendring. They've not got very many men. Does he have any allies or anything? Um... He's a non-aggression pact with those two. Not really anything useful for them. 
we have any allies we can claim? Um, we have a non-aggression pact with a few people, but no actual... Um, no actual alliances. Sorry, I forgot the word for it then. Uh, Brandon of the North. What's he up to? He's Lord Brandon of the North now. Obviously with his two so his two brothers uh, at the wall. Where's Arya? F married to a Frostheart. Where married to a Manderly. There you go. Very interesting. King Stannis, the Hammer of Hollowed Hall, revoked the Lordship of Mistwood from Sir Herbert Martins. King Stannis, the Hammer of Hollowed Hall, has declared King Stannis' blood feud against Iron King Balon the Rash. On Iron King Balon the Rash. There we go. So we are at war. And straight away, Tyrion takes the advantage. This is what happened last time I recorded it. As soon as there was a major war, Tyrion saw his opportunity and declared a war for independence. That's going to be very interesting then. We are going to stop the episode now. I know it just got exciting. I do apologise, but that's going to want you coming back for more to see how this war goes. So there we go. The Westerlands are now at war for their independence. Anyone joined with us? Not quite yet. Has anyone joined uh, the Iron, Th Iron Throne? That's the other question. No, in fact, Willis of the Reach is trying to attack them as well. But hopefully, now their armies are distracted, we have a chance to take some land. The Westerlands have some chance to claim, claim their independence as Lord Paramount Tyrion, or King Tyrion the Imp, as he will be known, looks to claim some land and some independence. So as I said, we're going to wrap the episode up there. Thank you very much for watching. I would make this a bit longer, but frankly, I've recorded this already, and my, my, my voice is starting to go, so I'm going to wrap it up now. Thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, please do feel free to leave a like. Uh, obviously, you don't have to, but it's always appreciated. If you have any comments, do leave them in the comment section below. I do love to see people talking about this. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.